Which books should a person read at least once in their life? The Count of Monte Cristo. It is full of strong emotions, and makes you question what is justice. Removed. It's easily the best English translation of this masterpiece of a book. And NBSP, Edit, Fixed Author Correct, The Stranger by Albert Camus The Trial by Franz Kafka The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway All three tackle the struggle of a man and the society around him. Massault in his simple otherness and detachment from those around him. Herke in his suffocation under a society and system that is other and inexplicable to him. Finally the story of Santiago and the society that determines he has no value. Dear readers I would advise mixing in some less depressing books in between these three, but highly recommend them all. For young readers and adults, The Secret Garden, Francis Hodgson Burnett It's full of mystery, adventure, and life lessons. HTTPS colon slash slash n dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash the underscore secret underscore garden hash slash media slash file houghton underscore ac 85 underscore b 9345 underscore 911 s underscore underscore secret underscore garden comma underscore 1911 underscore underscore cover dot jpg basically anything she has written. My grandmother gave me a tome with Secret Garden, a little princess, and little Lord Fauntleroy in it. All three charming and beautiful and just overall lovely books. The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Deleted. Finally some good fucking food. Battle Royale. Makes you feel sympathy for even what appears to be the most villainous and cruel person. By which author? Koshun Takami. Marcus Aurelius Meditations. Begin the morning by saying to thyself, I shall meet with the busy body, the ungrateful, arrogant, deceitful, envious, unsocial. All these things happen to them by reason of their ignorance of what is good and evil. Great stuff. The Demon Haunted World by Carl Sagan It's basically a treatise slash plea on critical thinking and proper application of the scientific method for the good of the species. Here's a quote, greater than I have a foreboding of an America in my children's or grandchildren's time, when the United States is a service and information economy, when nearly all the key manufacturing industries have slipped away to other countries, when awesome technological powers are in the hands of a very few, and no one representing the public interest can even grasp the issues, when the people have lost the ability to set their own agendas or knowledgeably question those in authority, when, clutching our crystals and nervously consulting our horoscopes, our critical faculties in decline, unable to distinguish between what feels good and what's true, we slide, almost without noticing, back into superstition and darkness. Many wonderful quotations from that book. Greater than one of the saddest lessons of history is this, if we've been bamboozled long enough, we tend to reject any evidence of the bamboozle. We're no longer interested in finding out the truth. The bamboozle has captured us. It's simply too painful to acknowledge, even to ourselves, that we've been taken. Once you give a charlatan power over you, you almost never get it back. Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. I often think of that book. What did it for me is when he talked about how some German guards were kind and some Jews were cruel. So while he saw that circumstance is what drove most people most of the time, he strongly believed that you can choose, if you try hard, to act differently than circumstances demand you act. He says it a lot better than me though. Strong tune did recommend. Man, what a duality seeing cruelty from those you love the most, and seeing kindness from the most heinous of villains. The Road by Cormac McCarthy. It's much better and darker than the movie. It's probably the closest imagining of what a real apocalypse would be like, with no heroes and no sense of hope. That said as far as book to movie adaptations go, the movie is really good. Book definitely has some disturbing shit. The man who mistook his wife for a hat by Oliver Sacks no seriously. It's a non-fiction, journal-style book about a, tilde psychiatrist question mark tilde edit, neurologist, and how he dealt with the different problems, illnesses and issues and in turn how the patients have been able to adapt and overcome the obstacles. 
It's very moving, not always easy or pleasant but powerful book. Surprised to find this on here but glad that Sax has other people that appreciate him. Have you read any of his other books? I loved this one and am curious if there are any other you would recommend by him. Edit, thank you for all the recommendations and comments regarding the author, it is good to see his memory lives on. An anthropologist on Mars is pretty wonderful. Catch 22. Hilarious, depressing, couldn't put it down. You must learn Snowden's secret. I absolutely hated this book and was so confused for about the first half, but then there's a single chapter halfway through that twists everything around and made me love the whole thing. I'm really glad I didn't give up on it, I didn't care for it the first time I read it but loved it every time I read it afterwards. Not sure why. Fahrenheit 451. Is it similar to 1984? There are similar themes but in 451 instead of using force and oppression to the government seems to have weaponized distraction and entertainment. Sort of like mixing 1984 with Brave New World. The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. I say this because this is the book that made me realize that I can enjoy reading too. Huge nerd, name gives it away, and I could never get into any novel we ever read in English class. There were a few I enjoyed, like Tom Sawyer and Of Mice and Men, but nothing that I still would think about weeks afterwards. Then I finally take science fiction literature class and Martian Chronicles is the first book up. I read the whole thing in about two days. This was the kind of thought-provoking science fiction I loved. As well as the best teacher I've ever had. This book is a series of connected short stories about the colonization of Mars. It's relevant, it's smart, it's funny, it was the first time I ever truly enjoyed reading. After that I spoke to my teacher about other things I might like, huge fantasy nerd too so he recommended me Jim Butcher's Codex Alaris series. It's essentially Avatar The Last Airbender crossed with A Song of Ice and Fire. That was the first long form novel series I read, and I'd be sitting in class getting yelled at to stop reading I was so into it. Butcher's other series, The Dresden Files, is also really really good. Sorry for the rant, this book is pretty important to me. Highly recommended to any science fiction fans. Oh also the Expanse novels, read them. They're fantastic. I remember our teacher took us out to read one of the stories, but because of the bad language he replaced the n-word with the next worst insult in his book which was hipsters so we had a middle-aged man yelling hipsters hipsters, outside our school and it was hilarious. The importance of being earnest by Oscar Wilde, reading plays is a great experience plus this one is hilarious. To lose one parent, Mr. Worthing, may be regarded as a misfortune, to lose both looks like carelessness. I'm going bun burying. I have put some thought into this question over the years. Here is a short list of 20 that I've cajoled my kids into reading as they grew up because I felt that there was a life lesson in each. Disclaimer, some of them are age appropriate. Foundation by Isaac Asimov The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco Great Expectations by Charles Dickens Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald The Chrysalids by John Wyndham To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee The Lord of the Rings Trilogy by J.R.R. Tolkien Don Quixote by Miguel de Cervantes Brave New World by Aldous Huxley 1984 and Animal Farm by George Orwell Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger Lord of the Flies by William Golding The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams Stranger in a Strange Land by Robert A. Heinlein 2001 A Space Odyssey by Arthur C. Clarke The Stand by Stephen King Flowers for Algernon. Not proud of this but as I had to read this as a teenager I fapped to the bit of his sexual experience with Faye I was horny and we had to read the book yes it was a devastating book and looking back I'm like wow it was good but back then I was a horny little shit and not much has changed tbh. The other comments on this book makes your comment hilarious. Everyone else seems to have had a strong emotional experience, and then there's you, just beating your meat. Thanks for the laugh.
Honestly, this ain't a classic and it doesn't have the literary weight of one, i.e. no one is going to call it a literary masterpiece and it's not something you can use to impress people, but get an anthology of Calvin and Hobbes. I recommend the complete Calvin and Hobbes which you can find on Amazon. Funny, quaint, sometimes surprisingly deep and sometimes just a reminder of the importance of friendship, this book has it all. I just read Dracula and I would strongly recommend it, in part because it's phenomenal and in part because there's a lot of irony in the fact that none of the characters know their Dracula characters. I am halfway through Dracula and keep putting it down for long periods of time, but I will say when I pick it up it is quite addicting at the time written in a very odd style though, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. My teacher wouldn't stop recommending that. I finally got it for Christmas this year but haven't started yet. Seriously, start it when you can. It's a masterclass in satire. It's at times like this, when I'm in the belly of a vegan warship with a man from Beetlejuice that I wish I had paid more attention to what my mother told me when I was young. What did she tell you? I don't know, I wasn't paying attention. 1984 The Hobbit Lord of the Rings Trilogy The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy Harry Potter Dune The Stand. Bro, if you like fantasy you gotta check out Brandon Sanderson's stuff. The Mistborn Trilogy is fucking amazing. Every book's got a big twist at the end and the entire trilogy coalesces to a fantastic and satisfying conclusion. The Stormlight Archive has some of the best world building I've ever seen. Truly one of the most epic series I've ever read. He's working on book 4 of the 5 book first arc as we speak, or, rather, comment. Elantris is a standalone novel and honestly felt like way more than just one novel. Awesome book. Those are my favorites, but he has plenty of other fantasy novels slash series that are unique, engaging, and super well written. Can't recommend reading his books enough, Crime and Punishment. The KGB used Dostoyevsky as part of their training for interrogations and it was so effective that the CIA was convinced they had developed a truth serum. He really knew how to write about the inner workings of the mind. Late edit, for those asking about the source for the KGB story, I picked that up from watching, Adam Curtis https colon slash slash n dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash Adam underscore Curtis. Unfortunately I don't remember which of his documentaries it was in, but I would recommend all of his films, which can be found on YouTube. Notes from Underground is also fantastic if you want an introduction to Dostoyevsky without the length of one of his regular novels. Also, The Double, A Nasty Story and The Gambler. I love his writing, but I'm more of a novella guy myself. These texts are excellent for an afternoon's read and really warm you up to his writing style. Notes from Underground really impacted me the first time I read it. Notes is my favorite classic novel. I really identify with the narrator. Unsurprisingly, I love and highly recommend Ellison's The Invisible Man as well. The Giving Tree I love this book but find it so depressing, anyone else? East of Eden my all-time favorite book. I love all of his books, but this one was the best emo. To Kill a Mockingbird. I found it underwhelming. I read the whole thing, and it gave me absolutely no insight on how to kill mockingbirds. Sure it taught me not to judge a man by the color of his skin. But what good does that do me? I've recommended Brave New World to everyone I know. Not only does it touch on class hierarchy, which is still present in most societies, either blatantly or subtly, but the book also delves into what happens when we strive for efficiency and forget about some of the most important aspects of what makes us human. Very recommended. Seems an old book, yet, together with 1984, Fahrenheit 481, and Mars Chronicles, some current events, seems as relevant, as the book's stories. Fahrenheit 451 is a great book, and 1984 is as well. Like you said, they are very relevant to some current events. The Kite Runner by Khalid Hosseini Loved that book, but I honestly think A Thousand Splendid Sons was better. Watership Down I fell in love with it in 6th grade and stole the teacher's copy and never gave it back, sorry Mrs. R. 
I read that copy to Tatters, have bought multiple copies and read them to Tatters since. But only the brown cover with the brown bunny on front. As time goes on they're getting harder to find, I have made just about every member of my family read it. I don't even know why I love that book so much. When I open it up and read the first line a feeling comes over me like I am home. You might already know, but Richard Adams did an AMA on Reddit, helped by his grandson. I remember when I realized that WD was him processing his experiences in WWLL, which made it all the better, in my opinion. It also got me to see religion in a different way. I'm still an atheist, but I now can appreciate faith as a positive force for people. Oib to Watership Down is on my bucket list. I actually went there once. I made my mom and uncle detour on our way to the London airport to fly home. I had a really bad cold, and we didn't have long to stop, but a cafe owner in Kingsclear pointed us to a path, and I ran all out like half a mile so that I could get to the spot where the honeycomb is. There's a horse track there now, so you can't walk right up among the trees, but you can see them, and you can look down over the hills. It really was beautiful, and if the book means as much to you as it does to me I strongly recommend you go. The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry Very short book, but I believe everyone should read this at least once, especially adults. Every time I've read The Little Prince I've gotten something profoundly new out of it. A masterwork. I wish I could find profound things in it when I read maybe I was looking too hard but couldn't. 100 Years of Solitude It's so beautiful. I loved every page. Wherever they might be they always remember that the past was a lie, that memory has no return, that every spring gone by could never be recovered, and that the wildest and most tenacious love was an ephemeral truth in the end. The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien A Short History of Nearly Everything by Bill Bryson. Short History is one of my favorites. Introduction Welcome. And congratulations. I am delighted that you could make it. Getting here wasn't easy, I know. In fact, I suspect it was a little tougher than you realize. To make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe, Carl Sagan.